Welcome to How to Fix It, the show where I take a notoriously flawed work of media, say a book, a movie, or a television show, and I give a basic summary of the work, talk about what worked and the potential it had, and then tell you what could have been done to fix it. This show is purely my opinion, so you might have differing opinions than I do, and that's fine. Just don't go running to the comments to tell me that I'm wrong. Because from my perspective, you're wrong. Now that the formalities are out of the way, let's get to the topic of today's episode. Today's episode is on Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. The MST3K movie. For starters, it's not a bad movie. But, like most of the stuff I'll go over on this show, it could have been so much more. <laughs> Mystery Science Theater 3000 was a show that ran from 1988 to 1999 on KTMA, Comedy Central, or the Comedy Channel, and the Sci-Fi Channel before it became Sifi. It was about a man being stranded in space by a mad scientist and forced to watch bad movies until he goes insane. You have the sleepy-eyed janitor Joel Robinson, who was the first to be marooned up in space, and he was played by Joel Hogson who built the robots. And then you have Mike Nelson, played by Mike Nelson, who took over when Joel left the show in mid-season 5. The mad scientist, Dr. Clayton Forrester, was played by Trace Beaulieu. And you Fruits and Geeks fans might recognize Joel and Dr. Forrester, since they had small cameos, as a disco-loving jumpsuit salesman, and Mr. Lacavara, respectively. The show was awesome, and I'm a huge fan of it. And this movie takes place during Mike's tenure, so no Joel here. Not much to go over on this one, in summary of the movie sense, because it's basically an episode of MST3K with a bigger budget. Except the movie is shorter than normal, so it's shorter, but it looks a lot cleaner and the sets are admittedly nicer, since it's a movie set. The basic premise of it really was amazing. It's MST3K, but bigger and better. Anyone who's seen an episode of the show knows that they made it on a budget that was less than what the BBC gave classic Doctor Who. So, theoretically, giving them Hollywood money to make an episode would have been awesome. Keyword there, would have. It had all the makings of a great episode, up there with Manos, The Hands of Fate, and Monster Go Go. And they did riff on the credits of the movie. Not This Island Earth, the movie they riffed. They riffed on the credits of Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie, which actually has a lot of my all-time favorite riffs in it. On down to El Marie Ford. Free hot dogs and balloons for mom. The amazing Rando. Watch Rando the Great construct sets with his very mind. No, we've never met before, have we? <laughs> Where to start? For one thing, it wasn't the best choice of movie. The executives at Universal put insane guidelines on what they could and couldn't do in the name of appealing to a broader audience. Which, I sort of get. Not every movie they did was accessible to newer viewers. But if they were making a movie, they'd have made it accessible. Another problem was the executive meddling caused a lot of references to be taken out, be it in the riffs or the host segments. They also changed a lot of stuff to make it fit the appealing to a broader audience thing. Not to mention, the biggest problem of them all, the movie wasn't advertised! Gramercy, the studio who produced it, had to make a choice on what movie to promote, MST3K or Barbed Wire. They chose the latter, and tell me, which one was the worst movie? The cutscenes were also a point that hurt the film. 
First of all, there was supposed to be a really cool version of the MST3K love theme playing over the opening, but they cut it. And then, there was a scene where a meteor shower hits, and the bots have to save Mike before the oxygen runs out, also unfortunately cut. And the entire ending was changed, from this scene where Mike and the bots exact revenge on Dr. Forrester by sending a metal Lunin mutant, who had been played by, by the Toolmaster, the guy who did the props for the show, Jeff Maynard. Then Crow would have went back down to the basement of the Satellite of Love to attempt another escape like he did at the beginning, but with a chainsaw that he had found in Servo's room earlier in the movie. But instead, it was changed to this strange and frankly out of place, this Island Earth-themed party scene, where Dr. F was sent to the shower of one of the Metal Lunins from a previous host segment. And while it was a good ending, the deleted one sounds a lot more fun. First and foremost, get rid of the executive meddling. Like, that's what's ruined more things I love than I can count. Many of them that we're going to look at this show eventually. Additionally, and this is purely my opinion, they should have brought Joel in to help produce it. The only problem is that the movie is why Joel left, since Jim Mallon had been pushing it for years and Joel had preferred to leave and let the show continue than to let his and Jim's issues get the show canned. Another thing, really, would have been to pick a better movie. This Island Earth isn't that bad of a film, there are much worse ones out there, and Universal really screwed the pooch on that aspect. And, as I said, it should have been advertised better. MST3K had, and still has, a following that, had it been advertised better, would have grown, and maybe MST3K would still be on today if that has happened. Well, there we have it, the first episode of my new show. Tell me what you think, and maybe I'll make this show more often. And we can talk about other things. If there's something you could think can be fixed, be it a television show, book, or movie, let me know and I might get to it in another episode of this. See you next time. In the not too distant future, way down in deep 13, the evil Dr. Forrester was in a nasty scheme He hired a guy by the name of Mike Just a regular Joe he didn't like His experiment needed a good test case So they caught him on his dog and they shot him in the space Well I sent them cheesy movies The worst I can find He'll have to sit and watch them all, then I'll monitor his mind. Now keep in mind, my can't control where the movies begin or end. He'll try to keep his sanity with the help of his robot friend.